What is truly part of German culture? What are authentic German traditions? Many Americans have very specific things in their heads of what Germany is all about, based a lot of times on what our media tells us or what has been passed down through the generations of people who descended from German immigrants. Americans imagine pickles and Christmas trees, beer being gulped down from beer steins, and large layered chocolate cakes. Well, today we aim at shattering your preconceived notions of what truly is German. Hey guys, and welcome back to our channel. This is my wife, Aubrey, and I am Donnie, and we are two Americans currently living in Germany and sharing all of our experiences and travels in Germany and throughout Europe. We just recently did a video on things that most Americans assume about Germany that may or may not actually be true. And we will link that video where you can check that out. But today we are talking about something a little bit different. German culture is extremely pervasive in the United States and a large part of that can be attributed to the fact that the most common ancestry of Americans is German at around 16% of Americans having some form of German ancestry. But that doesn't always mean that Americans have a good understanding of this culture and often think that some traditions they do or some things they see in the US are 100% German through and through, which is exactly our theme in today's video, things that Americans think are German, but are they? One of the very first things we are going to talk about is something that people have been repeatedly leaving in the comments. And maybe it's finally time to address the rage. <laughs> when Americans think of food in Germany, many times the first thing they will mention is Wiener Schnitzel. Let's do a little German lesson on something we just learned since moving to Germany ourselves. This is the capital of Austria. In English, we call it Vienna, but in German, it's Wien. And something coming from Wien would be Wiener. Therefore, a Wiener Schnitzel is in fact a delicacy from Vienna, Austria, and not from Germany. This is also one of the national dishes of Austria and a point of extreme pride for Austrians. Now you may be asking, what is the difference between a schnitzel from Vienna and any other schnitzel? A Wiener schnitzel is specifically and exclusively made from pounded out veal. It also is normally served with just slices of lemon to squirt over the top and a side of potato salad, potatoes with parsley and butter, or french fries. Any other schnitzel can be made from a number of different things like chicken, turkey, or vegetarian options, but normally you will find it made from pork in Germany. Sometimes you will find these types on the menu as Wiener Schnitzel vom Schwein, or a variation because if it is not veal, then they have to specifically call out what kind of meat the dish is made of and then prepared like a veal Wiener Schnitzel would normally be prepared. There's also a long list of types of schnitzels that are popular like Jaeger Schnitzel, Rom Schnitzel, or Ziegwohner Schnitzel, but the main point being made here, Schnitzel specifically called Wiener Schnitzel, although popular in Germany as well, is Austrian, not German, pure Austrian. Many Americans also make many assumptions about Germany and their drinking. That Germans just drink beer all the time and that they are passionate about their brews. And those assumptions are definitely true. But where Americans deviate from the truth is their belief in the drinking vessels Germans use to drink from. Maybe these are less confusion on what they drink from, but what they are actually called. The first example being the beer stein. Americans refer basically to any drinking vessel that looks German as a beer stein, and this is what they all are after as a souvenir when they come over to Germany. But the shocking thing is, beer steins don't really exist in Germany. Okay, beer steins do exist in that one, the cups that Americans think are called steins literally do exist and you do drink from them sometimes in Germany. And two, the word Bierstein is a real word in Germany, but it actually refers to calcified residue building up in a brewing vessel after brewing. In German, the word Stein means stone and does not refer to a drinking vessel with the one exception being Rhineland Falls, where they do sometimes refer to a one liter stoneware vessel as a Stein. Instead, what most Americans think of as a Stein is actually referred to by many names, depending on where in Germany you are, like Humpen, Steinzeugkrug, 
beer krug, stein krug, etc. And as a side note, a moss krug or moss is a massive one liter beer mug made of glass used primarily in Bavaria and is what you see in pictures of Oktoberfest and is never referred to as a stein or stein krug. Because stein means stone, it is used in the names of drinking vessels like stein krug that refers to a vessel that is specifically stoneware and not glass. I actually first learned this when I had an awkward moment in my German class here in Germany, and my teacher was teaching us about Beer Krüge, the proper name for a German drinking vessel. I asked her if we could also call them Steins. I repeated my question over and over, and as the whole class looked at me like I was nuts, asking if we could also call it a stone, I finally gave up, and that is when I learned, no, that is an English word for a beer Krug and is not used in Germany except for in Rhineland Falls in a few cases. Like we have mentioned in many of our videos, we are learning how extremely diverse Germany is and one way in one part of the country does not mean it is that way in another part of the country. So let us know in the comments below what you use or what you call what Americans refer to as a Bierstein. classic drinking vessel mix-up is the famous Das Boot. This is another Americanism and has a lot of different origin stories, but in Germany, if you bring up Das Boot, you will either be referring to the 1981 German submarine movie classic or just a boat, because Das Boot literally is just translated to the boat. Der Stiefel is actually the German word for the boot. There are a lot of different origin stories for Das Boot as a drinking vessel, including one that seems to indicate it may have some German roots and possibly came about in the mid 1800s when a Prussian general promised his soldiers that if they won the next battle, he would drink from his boot, but had a glass one created to save himself from his gross foot filth. Other stories say that this was a tradition for German soldiers to pass a boot full of beer around a battle for good luck. And there is also evidence that these were invented by the English in hunting clubs in the early 1800s. Some stories show that a footwear shaped vessel may have existed that may or may not have held beer for centuries in Europe. But the validity of these stories seem a little fuzzy online. What really made this popular in the US and perpetuated this stereotype that this is a popular drinking vessel in Germany was the American comedy Beer Fest, released in 2006 and then drinking in the US from a boot shaped glass skyrocketed. Suddenly you could hear guys in fraternity houses and universities across the land or Americans in different bars across the country chanting Das Boot for the famous glass boot to be brought out. It's no shoe. It's das boot. When you go into a beer garden, pub or brewery in Germany, what we have found is that many beers are served in glasses that are specific to the beer you are drinking. A couple of examples could be in Cologne, where their local Kolsch is served in a Kolsch Stange, a classic German pills served in a Pilsner glass, or the huge two pound Moss during Oktoberfest. That is two pounds empty, by the way. Germany is no stranger to the unique beer glass, and you can find Das Boot in Germany, but they are called Beer Stiefel, and seems to be more of a popular drinking game cut for teens, but overall not that popular. A classic dessert favorite for many Americans is going to be a good old American German chocolate cake. A German chocolate cake is a layered chocolate cake that is filled and topped with coconut pecan frosting. What it isn't though, is German. This is another embarrassing moment I had when I first came to Germany and lived with a German family during college. And I was asking them around the dinner table if they liked German chocolate. With a confused look, they were like, yeah, we make good chocolate in Germany, but the Swiss maybe do it better. And I was like, no, 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 not chocolate bars, like German chocolate, you know, like German chocolate cake. And we all sat around so confused until I finally just gave up and realized 
This must not be a German thing after all. And it forced me online to research and find out if what many Americans revered as a foreign delicacy we can make right in our own kitchen is truly from the country we accredit it to. What I learned is in fact, the German in the name German chocolate cake is not even referring to the country of Germany, but instead, is a last name. There was once an American baker named Samuel German that developed a special dark baking chocolate in 1852 and it was named after him, Baker's German's Sweet Chocolate. Fast forward now 100 years and in 1957, German's chocolate cake was found in the Dallas Morning News as the recipe of the day. This was a chocolate cake invented by Mrs. George Clay and used the dark baking chocolate created by Samuel German. There is special emphasis that should be put on the possessive form of the word Germans. Well, over time, the name Germans chocolate cake eventually dropped the possessive form of the word and it just became German chocolate cake. Once that was done, a lie was quickly assumed that this cake had origins in Germany and must have been brought over to the US. Now it is summer right now, so these next two would seem a little out of place, but we're gonna talk about Christmas anyway. We just got back from the pickle destination in capital of Germany in the mystical Spreewald, and it reminds us of an American tradition again, wrongly attributed to Germany, and that is the pickle ornament in the Christmas tree tradition. If you don't know this tradition, basically on the family Christmas tree, there will be all the normal decorations all over and a pickle Christmas ornament will be hidden somewhere on the tree. The first person to find the pickle on Christmas morning will receive either a special gift, will get to open the first gift that morning, or some just say good luck for the next year. Different families have different interpretations of what finding the pickle means to them. I personally never did this, but I do know friends that did grow up doing this with their family. So this definitely is a tradition, but not one every or probably even half of all American families actually do. But regardless of how few or many people actually participate in this tradition, it is almost always thought to be a German tradition that all Germans do and we got it from them somehow. However, of course, it isn't actually a German tradition. This isn't to say that Germans don't do this though. In fact, some Germans do, and it is thought that this is starting to become a tradition in Germany because of the popularity of it in the US and then spreading over here. In a survey from 2016, only about 8% of Germans had ever even heard of this tradition and only about 2% had ever participated in it. When we were in the Spreewald, they have an enormous amount of pickle-themed souvenirs, and even one of the lores about how this became a tradition stems from the people in the Spreewald decorating their Christmas trees with their gherkins. But we didn't come across a pickle Christmas ornament in the couple of stores we looked through. The origins of this tradition are debated with a couple of stories being about a Civil War soldier who was destined to be killed and his last wish was a pickle and his captives had pity on him. He survived the war and then got home and decorated his Christmas tree with pickles for more good luck. Then there are some stories about the retail giant Woolsworth importing pickle ornaments in the 1890s in the US from Germany and creating a marketing stunt about this being a great German tradition you could bring to your own home to promote sales and then led to this tradition. There are even other stories like one about a medieval shopkeeper who enjoyed dismembering children and pickling their limbs, but I don't wanna talk about that one and I'm gonna stop there. But the moral of the story is nobody knows exactly how it got started, but we do know that most likely this was never a real German tradition. Now for our last and most exciting thing that Americans believe to be German, but before that, we want to thank you for watching this far and if you have enjoyed this video, to please hit that like button, subscribe, and let us know in the comments the opposite of today's video. What things have you heard that have American origins or people do in Germany thinking it's American that either you know is not true or you question and we'll try to clear those things up for you. Our last one comes from one of the most popular shows in the US, The Office. <laughs> oh, judgment is nigh, but the Belschnickel is I. Yes, he is finally nigh.
I am not. Yes, that is Americans thinking Belschnickel is found all over Germany during Christmas time. Now here is the thing about Belschnickel for those that don't know. A short version is that Belschnickel is a famous character who comes one to two weeks before Christmas and combines the traditions a little of Krampus and Santa Claus as he brings gifts for good kids and whips the bad kids essentially. Belschnickel is here. I judge her here as impish. Oh. I judge your impish! Ow! Ow! Okay. We spent our first Christmas in Germany in 2018, and then we moved here and had only our second Christmas holiday season here last year. Around Christmas time, though, we start to have friends and family from the States ask us all about Belschnickel and if we have seen him yet because of this episode of The Office. In this episode, Dwight wants to put on a typical Pennsylvania Dutch Christmas for the office and don't let the Dutch part of that word fool you into thinking we are talking about modern Dutch people from the Netherlands. Pennsylvania Dutch are a group of people living in Pennsylvania who come from early German immigrants to the US and they keep a lot of their old unique customs and that is why many people ask us about seeing Belschnickel in Germany now. However, we only think we saw a quick thing about him on the news in Nuremberg in 2018. Otherwise, we have never seen him. When I started asking around to all the Germans we knew over here if they grew up with Belschnickel, I only got no's and who is that? Belschnickel is specific to the Palatinate region of southwest Germany along the Rhine, the Saarland, and the Odenwald area of Baden-Württemberg. Belschnickel is a crotchety fur-clad gift giver related to other companions of St. Nicholas in the folklore of southwestern Germany. However, we live in this part of Germany and we didn't really see anything on him. Of course, me saying that is just expressing literally just that what we saw with our own eyes, not saying that he isn't still around in these parts. And I would actually ask our German viewers to please say if Belschnickel was or is part of your Christmas traditions in the comments below. We are kind of being misleading by including this one in the video about things Americans think are German, but probably really aren't, because we can actually confirm that Belschnickel is definitely a German tradition, but not to the extent that Americans hope for because of this episode of The Office. I think that many Americans hear this and are enamored by the idea that in Germany, Christmas has this dark, tormenting side as well, and they built this up to be a much bigger thing than it actually seems to be. No one dares Santa the way they fear Belschnickel. So is Belschnickel a huge Christmas tradition in Germany? From what we have seen and heard, not really. But in very small specific regions in Germany, you may find this crotchety old man wandering around a couple of weeks before Christmas. Once more, Germany is extremely diverse and we have found that it is really difficult to say this is the way that it is in Germany, and we love learning about how everybody has a different take on life in Germany from all the different parts of Germany our viewers are from. A lot of these things are based on the idea that Americans have that if something is German and if I take a trip to Germany, this is what I'll find without realizing the complexity and diversity of German regions and how specific some traditions are. So if you have a different take on what we have talked about or have more to add based on where you live in Germany, leave those in the comments. Again, thanks so much for watching this video, guys. We really hope you enjoyed this video. And if so, hit that like button and subscribe button, and we will see you in our next video. Cheers! and sharing all of our experiences and travels. What? <laughs> Siri? Go ahead. Yeah. Go away. <laughs> okay. We want AC. We want AC. That's a lot of time to saying schnitzel. Schnitzel, schnitzel, All of our experiences and travels here on this channel. What the heck, Siri? Go away. One of the very first things <laughs> I'm sorry. Okay. Many times the first thing they will mention is Wiener Schnitzel. <laughs> and sharing all of our experiences and travels in Germany and in Europe. Go away, Siri. Okay, I found this on the web for all of our experiences and travels in Germany and in Europe. Check it out. Siri, go away. Thank you. Close. Thank <laughs> you.